Hey, what's going on with you guys? It's been a week, which means you're due for another one of these fucking things. So, episode 7 of the Truly Terrible Podcast. Thanks for sticking around this long. Um, yeah. So, I was going to have a sponsor, a really reputable sponsor. They also own, or I guess it's a subsidiary of the company, Tom Shoes. Uh, Tom's Booze. It's where, for every six-pack you buy, a beer is brought to an alcoholic homeless person in need. Uh, you know, to stave off their their withdrawal symptoms and whatnot. It's a great, great quality product. Um, you just buy Tom's uh, Old Fashioned Liquor or even uh, Tom's Light Beer, and they get their own six-pack or their own pint of vodka uh, for every bit that you buy. And so, just like their shoes, they're helping people in need. Maybe a different demographic, but equally as valuable. But at the end of the day, uh, I just I couldn't... I couldn't stick with that sponsor, you know? I had to go with my heart, and my heart tells me to go with Vapolabs. And so Vapolabs, premium e-juice, uh, copy number one. Once again, I didn't read these beforehand because that Hitler or uh, genocide joke from the last one was pretty top-notch. And so here's to hoping that they put another wildly inappropriate thing in there. And uh, they told me right after the episode aired, they're like, hey, that went fucking great. Uh, your, your audience is the shit. They're, they're a great group of little sluts. And so uh, if you do need... Uh, vape juice or any of their products they have the e-cigs as well i have mine here it's really great i I didn't know they could be this high quality um check them out and use my code and so without further ado here we go you there he is you why do you torture yourself day in and day out join me and billions of others that's right i said it billions of other people that have made the switch to vape o labs e-juice they couldn't say it if it wasn't true visit vapolabs.com today to pick up some e-liquid or a starter kit with the code murka25 that's m-u-r-k-a the number two the number five and get 25 percent off your juice and free shipping in the u.s uh you will just love nuka crunch a sweetened 90s breakfast cereal swimming in ice-cold milk for that nostalgic crunch. No matter what flavor you decide on, they're all eligible for Juice Rewards. Juice Rewards is an innovative rewards program at Vapo Labs. Just buy a few bottles, then get a bottle free. It's that fucking easy. So go ahead and pick up a bottle of e-juice from the only company that will give you free stuff. Uh, Vapo Labs, science bitch. Please use responsibly. Must be 18 year old. I was trying to stop, talk too fast and I got flustered. California Prop 5. This product contains nicotine. No shit. That's why people want this, because it contains nicotine. Like, it's fun. Little nicotine buzz, who doesn't like that? Billions of people like that. Not even because Vapo Lab says it, because cancer is a huge problem and the main purveyor of nicotine is ciggies. And, you know, it's good to get those out of here. Get cigarettes out of here, you know? Anyway, what? The fuck did I want to lead in with today? Oh yeah, so I wanted to talk like I the last podcast I did I put the the Paris thing uh, I I talked about it briefly because it was literally happening I guess it happened like a week ago uh, when I was doing the podcast and it was all happening live so I didn't get the full fucking spectrum of it so I wanted to touch back on that and like the political correct shit surrounding it that apparently everybody's so afraid to mention. Um, First of all, condolences. I know I'm sure I have some people out there in France. I don't know. Uh, I know France is a very populous country. So if uh, out of out of the 120, 130 who are killed and the 350 who are wounded, I guess there's a good possibility that you uh, it may be connected to you directly, or more likely you might know someone who is connected to that incident. So that's really shitty, um, awful to hear. Um, yeah, I heard quite a bit about the police not going in right away, which I need to do more research on that, honestly. Um, it seems kind of fucking ridiculous that, like, it would take, like, an hour or whatever. Like, they're executing people, summarily executing them one by one with their weapons that they snuck into this uh, Bataclan, Bataclan, I don't know how to say it, the, the concert hall, and it just seemed like it took way too long. Like, is that because French police officers, like the, the regular Joe police officers, aren't equipped to handle that situation, so they had to bring in, like, their equivalent of SWAT? Uh, if that's the case, that can, seems kind of fucked up, like, where, you know, a regular police officer should be able to go in there and start knocking down those baddies, because otherwise, what's the point of of the cops? Is it like, oh, this this hooligan is, is spraying water on stray dogs. Call the regular police. They can handle it. Don't bother the elite uh, who only come around after an hour of waiting. Um, but once again, I don't fucking know. The whole scenario just seemed to me where it's like, okay, you could have saved more of these poor people's lives and the ones who survived, you could have put them through a somewhat less traumatic experience by getting in there a little fucking faster. Um, that's just what I think. But the other thing is like, as soon as this whole thing hit the internet was just a buzz 
with shit like, uh, oh, not all Muslims are not, uh, re terrorism doesn't have a religion, and blah, 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 and this and that, and, uh, I, I tried, every time one of these, like, not all whatever, or, uh, don't focus on this or that news stories breaks, when, uh, 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 I guess what people think is a minority group. There's 1.6 billion Muslims out there, not a very big minority. Uh, or I guess it is literally a big minority of the U.S. or the global population. Uh, anyway, every time one of these things happens, it seems like everybody is just beating each other off, just being like, oh, you know what? I don't think that I, on my ivory tower of knowledge, I know that not all Muslims are terrorists. No fucking shit. No fucking shit. Everybody knows that. And I searched for like a solid hour on Twitter and on the internet looking for people who were being bigoted and saying like, oh yeah, kill all the Muslims and all, all Islam is a religion of evil and it, it turns you into a gremlin of, of, of Allah who just wants to slay people indiscriminately in the West. Like, even people who were saying just way more banal things that could still be construed as offensive like even i was looking for a tweet to be so much as like damn these muslims need to get under control like even something like that i couldn't find something that banal and yet still kind of, of offensive you know like i i searched i searched and all i found were hundreds of thousands of self-congratulatory circle jerking posts by people who want to feel more like holier than thou and more progressive of not all muslims and not all this and not all that and it's just like okay you're you're all banding together to fight a phantom of bigotry that isn't even there like there's not a huge wave of people we all fucking know most of us know uh, at least a few Muslims in our lives, and we know that they're good people who just want to live their fucking lives. They're not trying to, you know, they're not on the inside, like, oh, rubbing their hands, like, I've tricked all the white people. <laughs> like, none of us think that. And it's only the super far left people that are like, they make super liberals look conservative. They're so far beyond what even, like, hyper-liberalism is. They're that far left. It's only those people who want to just congratulate each other on their tolerance so it's really not so much as hey we're standing with this group of people as much as it is hey everyone hey everyone who already agrees with me everyone all of you on twitter that we share this hashtag look at me look at me and favorite my tweet did you, wait, wait wait i know this is a tragedy but stop real quick stop stop that stop that did you notice me did you notice that i i also i'm not blaming all the muslims yeah no fucking shit T just tired of it Tired of the false outrage after every fucking thing that happens that involves a minority or a group of uh, people who uh, the, some other group thinks is subjugated, where they suddenly just get on their fake horse and ride to faux victory, uh, fighting no, no opponents the whole time. Just beating each other off, feverishly masturbating each other, and oh yeah, you're, you're so tolerant. Your turn now, you tell me how tolerant I am. Yeah, I'm real tolerant, aren't I? Yeah, we're, we're fighting this fictional enemy together, aren't we? No. There are people out there who are real pieces of shit that d legitimately hate Muslims. They do. They, there are people out there that are real pieces of shit that don't understand the difference between a small percentage of extremists who are real pieces of shit, obviously, and those who are just everyday folks trying to live their lives. And those people suck, but to build up this narrative that that is the norm somehow and that the whole U.S. is so xenophobic about this is just a flagrant falsehood and I don't like it. It's like, I don't know, I don't like any of that shit where people try and get so PC to the point that they can't bring up real problems and even the hint that you might bring up a real problem is suddenly, uh, you know, bigotry in and of itself. Uh, like, I was talking with uh, Melissa and I spent a long time last night or I guess last night, a couple nights ago, talking about this whole issue and saying, like, you know, what what is, like, she was explaining, like, the stats of it and whatnot, and she did convince me somewhat her position because my uh, original position was a lot more like, uh, yeah, Islam, like, it's not all Muslims, obviously, but I was way more convinced that, like, Islam is way more responsible for this than... Uh, not not Islam, the, the religion, like, it's not going to get up on and walk on its book legs and convince you of something that's not... Like, it's not autonomous in that regard. But it, religions do have the ability to influence people in a very severe way. 
And I was thinking, like, well, I think that the religion itself has these texts that are really disgusting about, uh, you know, killing those who don't believe and things like that. Or uh, uh, punishment for apostasy is death. Um, you know, even if most people, the vast majority, don't practice those things, the those who ha are inclined to be extreme, having that as an outlet or an excuse for those behaviors, they're more easily inclined. That's more facilitated by the presence of that in their holy book. Um, and she was just saying, like, yeah, that, I guess... I guess that's true. It's it's a contributor to it. It's a potential contributor to the acts that we see, but it is not the cause. You know, uh, I think that the the fact that like you could go back in time six hundred years to when Christians were using disgusting parts of their books, and you, like, oh, you're gay, fuck you, burn at the stake, eat shit. This is what our book says. You got to do it. You know, go to hell. And I feel like it's partially that. With those backwards groups like ISIS and whatnot, they are in that sort of quote-unquote dark ages of their religion where they are doing a similar thing to what Christians, you know, a thousand years ago, I guess a thousand years ago was like right in the heart of the Middle Ages, like I guess between 500 and AD and 1000 AD. And so right around then, it's like they're going through that phase, those groups like ISIS and uh Boko Haram and Al Qaeda and the Taliban and uh, you know all these other groups, and so I think that's partially it, and an even bigger part I think is that these groups, a lot of them, like when you, I never really internalized the whole thing of like, hey, when you kill one person over there, that's not like related at all to the to the shitty people who are like they're just if you kill someone that's just living their life as collateral damage. Those that person's brother or that person's dad or that person's you know family member is going to be more pissed off and be like, what the fuck? Like we didn't do anything, and if anything, that's going to encourage people into that style of life where they're like, yeah, you know what? Fuck the West, fuck the U.S. They took something away from me, and I'm gonna, god damn it, I'm gonna take something away from them. Like so, it's not gonna convince someone out of the blue, but it could help push someone who is already on the edge into that direction. So really, it's just a long period of time of fucking with these civilians over there that is the result of this more than anything, I think. Where it's like, it, it, and this is by no means to say, like, you guys know that I'm harsh on every religion. So to say that there is no, like, to say, like, oh, the, the book of, or the, the, the book of the Quran, the book of Islam, that the, on the words in there don't actually influence any acts at all. It's like, you can't go that far. You can't just totally separate one from the other because those acts do. Just like killing gay people back in the Middle Ages in, in Christendom was influenced by the Bible. Like it said, Thou, uh, a man shall not lie with another man or whatever, and so they didn't allow that. They'd kill you. So, I don't know. It's just, I feel like I'm becoming a little more like, multifaceted in this opinion, like, not just one, like, oh, you know, this is the cause, and that's hard for me, because I have a really black and white mentality sometimes towards things, because I just, I like just off the cuff, just going with, like, that's my opinion, I'm going to stick with it, oh, I kind of realize that I'm wrong, but whatever, yeah, I'm sticking with this opinion, uh, so it's, it's more difficult for me sometimes to go with, like, a grayer approach, which is, I, I guess I'm realizing to do better now, at least with this issue, but, yeah, it's just a really fucking shitty issue, I, I, if you guys, I think, I disagree with, Whatever I'm saying, I know I've been a little all over the place, but that's how I'm feeling, is, you know, that this issue, you kind of have to be a little all over the place, because the the, the catalyst that begins these kind of terror missions uh, is really multifaceted. It's not all the religion. It's not all uh, being subjugated by the West. It's not all growing up in poverty. It's not all of anything, but there is a combination of factors that I don't think we'll ever really be able to hammer out uh, that it is, so... Anyway, the goddamn, I just went off on that little tangent for a while. I need to fucking go to something a little nicer. Um, that was funny that Ronda Rousey lost, right? <laughs> she just got the shit kicked out of her. Yeah, man, I, I, I hope that that Holly Holm chick stays on top for a while. And I hope that the next chick that Ronda Rousey fights is also really good and that Ronda Rousey loses again. Because then suddenly it's not, oh, Holly Holm is the only woman who can compete with Ronda Rousey. If Ronda Rousey loses to another elite chick, suddenly it's, okay, now we've got like a triangle, now we've got a real league of people who are capable of competing on this super high level, you know? It makes it into a more competitive league instead of, hey, watch the, the pioneer of this sport beat the shit out of someone who is probably doesn't have what it takes to be a real professional. Um... 
anyway, that, that, that tickled me, tickled me pink to see that. I thought that was really funny. Um, yeah, that Jared Fogle guy. I'm just going through. I, I spent like no time this week looking at uh, looking at news stories because everywhere I was looking for more news stories, it just seemed like uh, everything was about the terrorist attacks, which makes sense. Kind of a big fucking story, and because like. Every time a terrorist attack happens in the West, that impacts the whole media turn that whole next week. So, like, if 90 people die in Nigeria from an attack from Boko Haram, or it happens in West Africa or whatever, suddenly that's on the front pages of news sto- sites when it otherwise wouldn't have. So, like, terrorism is, like, the hot button right now, at least until, like I've said, another famous celebrity decides to get their dick chopped off and, you know, be a woman as soon as they kill someone in their car to get out of jail so whatever neither here nor there so but yeah i want to spend a little less time on these events because i I, honestly i like talking about this shit in the beginning when i have like opinions about it but i also have more fun with the the viewership and getting involved uh with answering your questions and whatnot which by the way um the bonus episode of the podcast that you get i believe by being a Patreon of $5 a month or more, that will be this, uh, you guys should be getting that this Monday. So this upcoming Monday, it's, uh, f- you'll be watching this on Friday, so on Monday you'll be getting that, and hopefully that'll stave you over until, uh, stave you over, that doesn't make sense, Taylor, that'll hold you over until Thursday when the next episode of this shit comes out. So next Monday, or this upcoming Monday, so when you see this in three days, two and a half days, whatever, uh, you will be getting that bonus episodes. And if you want to get it, then $5 on the Patreon a month. That's all you need to do. That's linked below. Um, yeah, so be waiting for that shit. But, yeah, the Subway fucker uh, got 15.6 years in federal prison. I said federal because it makes it sound more official. I don't know if it's federal prison. I assume so. But that... That guy, can you imagine how many footlong jokes he's going to hear as he's being sodomized repeatedly and people are going to take out their anger on him about when they were at Subway and their order was wrong? Where it's like, I got a fucking sweet onion chicken teriyaki and you ran out of the chicken halfway through and that stupid bitch just used one tray instead of two and tried to spread it out and charge me the same. Motherfucker! Like, or, ah, oh, you were out of mayo and so you put light mayo on there and you acted like I couldn't see but I knew you could fucking see, you asshole. You fruitcake, you child diddler. Take it, take it, you like it, right? So, uh, well, that's... Hopefully that doesn't actually happen because, uh, one, one... Rape does not undo another rape. Or, did he rape anyone? I know he had sex with an uh, underage girl, but I don't know if it was a statutory rape or, like, a, he actually, like, for real, out of the bushes, like, ooga booga rape. Like, uh, you know, surprise, I'm jumping out of the bushes and now we're, I'm raping you. And, like, that kind of rape. Or if he actually just did the statutory rape. Still reprehensible, because it's just not what you should be doing. Just, you know, it's not that hard. It's not that hard to just not do that. Get your shit together, man. Too late for that, though. Uh, I got 15.6 years in prison. Uh, I guess they figured that out, that number, by just adding up the ages of all the kids on his computer. <laughs> he had, like, uh, like, so much child porn. Like, this guy, he could have watched a different video, a different movie every day for, like, five years and still had way more content. Like... Good lord, I, I just, I don't get it. There, If you go back and watch those commercials where he's given that goofy grin at uh, at the screen talking about that meatball sub or whatever the fuck, he's got a little, there's a sparkle in his eye that says he likes watching children bathe, you know? He's got a sparkle in his eye that says, hey, I go by parks when my I'm not even with my niece, you know. Sometimes I walk around the parks going, Johnny, Johnny. There is no Johnny, but it lets him get closer to his targets, you know. He's got that creepy look. And your sandwiches suck tits. They're just not that good, dude. Like, I don't know. Now now I'm getting too too harsh, you know. Maybe there's a good Subway out there somewhere. Um, I don't think so. Yeah, so Subway, pedo, Jared Fogle, uh... You think he's going to gain weight in prison? He's going to start packing on the pounds? Maybe that's why he lost weight in the first place. He's like, God damn it. 
I, nobody's selling me the child porn that I want because they see that I'm a very easy target. Maybe if I lose a bunch of weight and look like a semi-normal, albeit incredibly ugly man, people will sell it to me because then they'll be like, okay, this guy looks like an upstanding member of society. He's not going to get caught and, and bring it back to me, you know? Maybe that was the whole incentive. Maybe that's why he was getting those those six-inch subs trying to lose weight for his weird perversions. Um, I don't know. That... That pro I'll go, I'll say eighty percent that that is not the case, probably eighty percent not the case because because uh, that is just fucking ridiculous and no one in the right mind could believe. Actually, you know, weird. That's if that's what he was into. Now that I'm talking about it, it doesn't seem that totally crazy because like guys and girls lose weight to get the attention of the opposite sex. Maybe he was well, no, but that's an implied arena of attraction, though. You know. Where it's like, if you lose weight as a 20-whatever-year-old guy, you know that you're going to be more attractive to straight women your age because you're not overweight. If you're a 30-whatever-the-fuck-year-old pear-shaped pedo, losing weight isn't going to help you because, like, there's no child out there who's going to be like, you know what, that big fat fuck that uh, buys us all ice cream at the park... I used to think that he was a little creepy, but you know that that Bugs Bunny ice cream cone and his his slightly smaller pants and the way he gives us all free chicken teriyaki sandwiches, really I'm turned around on him. Like no, that's not happening. That's not happening with kids. No way. No way. No how. Probably. Probably. Yeah. Um. So a lot of God. I I wrote these topics so fucking out of order. I'm a goddamn idiot. I uh. The whole. I guess it's going to be mostly this terrorism talk until I get to your questions, because there's quite a few things I want to touch on, even though we're, like, only a few more minutes until I'm taking your questions anyway. So if you don't like it, please bear it out. Sorry about that, or you can skip forward. Um, a lot of states in the U.S. are refusing acceptance of these refugees, and if I'm being honest, I didn't even know that was something that they could do. Something like 26 states, uh, the great state of Missouri has not made a stance on it yet, but, like, a couple states, like... Washington, Pennsylvania, Delaware are saying like, hey, yeah, come one, come all. And then most states that have made a declaration are like, yeah, no, we do not want any uh, Syrian refugees here in light of the French attack there. We're too worried about uh, terrorists coming in uh, from those groups. And that is a really sticky, sticky issue, you know? Like, the undoubtedly... Unfucking, there is no doubt in my mind that the overwhelming majority of those people are just sh have been having shit luck and they just want to find somewhere else to go. And obviously, going from what is a real shithole like Syria to the most powerful country on earth that's a first world country with all this shit that they've never even imagined they could have in life is a huge move up. But also, there's no doubt in my mind that there will be nefarious characters that find their way in with those groups. They will. Because there's no true way to document every single person. It would just be too many people. I still don't know the total amount that the U.S. is thinking about. I don't know. Uh, it's just a matter of, you know... And then, even then... Like, just as big a problem as... Actually, an even bigger problem, arguably, than letting all those people in and just being like, well, you know, if a few or a hundred or so U.S. citizens die, like, then that that's the price of helping these people, you know? Which, at that point, it's kind of like, I understand the, the numbers thing, where it's like, oh, well, you know, a hundred died of our citizens, but we saved 10,000, or like, a hundred thousand of theirs. Uh, the math works out on that, but it's also like, okay, but what is the duty of a country if not to do things in the best interest of the current citizens, you know? Like, that may sound callous, but that is what a country is for. It's to serve the best interests of the citizens and to have a net gain on the quality of life for the people living there. Um, another big issue with uh, a huge influx of Syrians and refugees coming here is what if it becomes, like, a really poorly executed thing like what happened in a lot of European countries from uh, not even Syrian immigrants in this, but previous waves of immigrants from the Middle East uh, in, you know, the UK or in France or in uh, these countries where they didn't assimilate. They didn't just come to that country t 
take advantage of the better opportunities and build a better life, they went there and then pretty much formed slums of, you know, like with like. So the big immigrant group just came in, formed a slum, and now, like in France, there's no... There's areas of, of France in cities where there's a big immigrant group and police won't even go there because they know that their rule of law will not be respected there. So it's like, all right, it's not just about this. It's about assimilation, like making sure that the, that if we do let a bunch of Syrian immigrants in, that they're being spread out enough that it's like, okay, you have to assimilate. Like we're taking you into our country, but you do have to assimilate. You have to get with the program. Uh, we're not going to be, you know, doing any Sharia law stuff here. You're not any allowed to you know, hit your wife or whatever, you can't tell your wife that she can't drive, you can't do these other things that you used to be able to do in Syria under Sharia law. You can't do that. That's not how we roll here. you got to assimilate. And that's almost as troublesome because there's no way to ensure that, you know? And you can't just be like, all right, you know, we need to split everybody up to the point that there's only like three of you per square mile in all these states and then you're lonely and sad because you're in a new place with no friends and no one who speaks your language. But tough luck, you know, buck up, buttercup, you know, so you can't do that. It's just, there is no good solution to this. But more, even, like, the more worrisome thing, I think, is the whole assimilation, not so much, like, the terrorist risk. Like, if they're gonna, they're gonna find their way over here, if they're gonna find their way over here, like, yeah, sure, if they wanted to sneak people in, uh, they kill They can. I'm sure they can. But the more flagrant issue, I think, is the economics of letting that many people in who are probably not skilled laborers and are, might have a lot of difficulty assimilating to a first world country where uh, we don't put up with, uh, you know, treating women as second class citizens and shit like that. Like you don't. No, no, no. You can't do that. You can't just confine your woman to your home and and beat her or you know rape whoever like not saying that all those people do that obviously but you know that the culture over there is much different than what i'm trying to say i feel like i'm digging myself a fucking hole right now where i started off good and then i slowly went down a rabbit path and then lost it but what i'm trying to say very different cultures and it's going to be really fucking hard to assimilate can you say it one more time taylor can you fucking repeat that one more time you dumb idiot anyway so I uh, should have just kept talking about that pedophile lump of pear-shaped shit, Jared Fogel. Um, yeah. To his credit, though, to Jared Fogel's credit, it's better to look at it than actually be raping kids. So, on a scale of 1 to 10 scumbagginess, he's like a 10 instead of an 11, you know? So, so you know, there's that. And then... uh Oh, one thing real quick before we get on and go and answer your questions and topics for this week. Uh, I saw one of these quotes. Every time, like, uh, the the new pope, instead of, uh, you know, Emperor Palpatine, Pope Classic, every time the new fucking pope has a quote that's, like, even a little bit tolerant, where it's like, Hey, I'm the pope, and I think that condoms aren't that bad. People are like, Oh, my God, look at this beacon of tolerance. Wow. He's actually cool, not like the old Pope. Oh my god, I almost just coughed from saying it like that. <sighs> yeah, every time the Pope says something all right that's a little bit tolerant, that's like something that any normal person would say, he's just treated like a like a champion. I just saw a Dalai Lama quote today, and that dude's the same thing. The Pope, the Dalai Lama, these huge religious leaders can say whatever the fuck they want, and as long as it's the slightest... Little tiny bit, a little bit tolerant. They the people treat them like they're gonna change the whole religion. It's like no, they're not. The Dalai Lama said, and I quote. Sorry, I think that was a little bit loud. We cannot solve this problem only through prayers. I believe in praying, but humans have created this problem, and now we are asking God to solve it. It is illogical. So let us work for peace and not expect help from God, Buddha, or the governments. And that was him talking about the terrorist attacks. The fuck? That's not profound? That's not profound. If anything, that's a shit dick thing to do. You're a religious leader, 
and you're saying, you know, I believe in praying. I believe in turning to God in times of need. Turning to God in times of need is very important, except not this time of need, because it's a real big time of need, and we kind of made it for ourselves. And we made it for ourselves, so we should solve it. Not like God, who made us, but we're causing problems, and, but he doesn't have to solve problems for us. He did make us the same way we made this problem. But for some reason, we're more accountable for solving the problem that we made instead of him solving us, which is the problem that he made. Go fuck yourself. That's not deep. It's not insightful. It's fucking stupid. It is illogical. As you said, Dalai Lama. God, I hate that dumb horse shit where they say something so, so... I've said banal like three times this podcast, but whatever. It's a rare word anyway. Be anal. Um, yeah, humans have created this problem and now we're asking God to solve it. It is illogical. N no. The fuck? That's not illogical. Well, I guess in the truest sense, it is illogical because you're asking God to solve a problem and God's not there. Uh... Let us work for peace. Good, good suggestion. Good suggestion, you know. Um, you know, I, I had a suggestion for, for helping starving people in Africa. Uh, let us work for more food. Let us work for more food. Someone quote me and thumbs me up on Reddit, or upvote me on Reddit to the top or whatever. Like, it's just fucking cringy and awful that so many people, ugh, so stupid. And not expect from help from God, Buddha, or the governments. Not even God and Buddha now should be asked for help. The government. The government shouldn't even be asked for help. Right, Dalai Lama? Right, you, you fuck who live in the mountains somewhere in abject luxury. Doing whatever you want. Making stupid tweets. The Dalai Lama has a fucking Twitter. What would God think, Dalai? If he could see you now. Anyway. I don't know that why that aggravated me so much. It was just, I was scrolling through looking for news shit, and to see that, that smug douche, I don't even know if he's a douche, I don't know anything about the, the fucker, other than he makes dumb quotes that people just masturbate over feverishly. Um, anywho, Jesus Christ. I got really off the rails. Whatever. So I'm going to your questions for this episode, but real quick, before those questions, Labs Premium E-Juice. Jimmy John's, they give out free smells. Planned Parenthood, they give out free rubbers. So now it only makes sense to buy from the only e-liquid company that gives you free stuff, right? I thought they were going to say uh, Planned Parenthood. They give out free children parts or free fetus fists or fetus feet. Fetus, God, should have read this ahead of time and I could have had a good little one-liner there. Anyway, so now it only makes sense to buy from the only e-liquid company that gives you free stuff, right? Introducing Vapo Labs, a retro futuristic brand that has a knack for quality. Let me tell you, this e juice is even better than free rubbers. Are you ready for hippo milk? Straight from the sweet strawberry teat of victory? He hard to harvest, you won't find hippo milk anywhere else. No matter what flavor you decide on, don't forget about juice rewards. Just buy a few bottles, then get one free. It's that easy, so go ahead, pick up a bottle of e-juice from the only company that will give you free stuff, now with free goddamn shipping to the U.S. exclusively. Ugh, just burp in the middle of it. Sorry, sorry, e-juice, or Vapo Labs. Uh, Vapo Labs. Science, bitch. Please use responsibly. Must be 18 years or older to use this product. California Proposition 65, this product contains nicotine. Uh, also, don't forget, use the code MURKA25, M-U-R-K-A-2-5, for 25% off e-juice with free shipping. That's actually an incredible deal. Um, they sent me my free shit, so I don't think they're going to re-up me on my product, and I'm already fiending. Uh, I've used a ton of it real quick because it's much, much better than anything I've had before. Uh, and I've been been—I've used one of these vape pens for quite a long time, like since their inception, um, like probably a couple of years now. Uh, no, nothing this good or this nice as far as vapor go. I started off like a peasant. Started from the bottom and now I'm here is what I'm trying to say. Uh, so anyway, uh, now in all seriousness, guys, please buy Hippo Milk. The investment we had to make to get this hippo in the lab is ridiculous. So do that. Uh, they're milking that hippo's teats. They're, they're hippo tits? How do you tell the difference between a male and a female hippo? Aside from the dick, you know? And even then, some animals do that, like, uh, ninja dick thing, where it's kind of up in a pocket, and then when it gets horny, it's just like, what the, where the fuck did that thing come from? I don't know if hippos are like that. But, uh, milking them seems dangerous. They kill a lot of people in Africa every year, or so I saw a decade ago on Animal Planet. So, uh, very dangerous. So... In all seriousness, buy the hippo milk. I'm act that's actually what I have in my container right now. It is my second favorite uh, Nuka Crunch and hippo milk. 
are the two ones that I like a lot. I like mixing the hippo milk one with the key lime cloud, key lime cloud, the key lime flavor, and that's good together too. So check them out. Show them that you guys are the best fans in the universe, or the best, uh, the greatest fans in the multiverse. If I'm Woody talking about his uh, fucking Minecraft server, so yeah. Continue to support them. It helps me out when you help them out. So thank you very much. Um, anyway, enough is enough. Let's get to a question. So, hello, I'm Chris, and I got what I think is a fairly interesting question for your podcast. So my dad got me an original Xbox when it first came out, and I was pretty young, like five or six, and I mostly played football games and Fusion Frenzy and pretty much kid-friendly games. But my friend at school kept talking about a game called Halo, which was M-rated, <gasps> but it sounded really fun to me, so I pretty much tricked my mom into buying it, and I loved it. I played it dozens and dozens of times and wanted to play with, and wanted to play it with all my friends, but their parents wouldn't let them play it. So you were five or six when Halo came out. How old are you? Uh, anyway, what I'm trying to say is that I played slash watched all the stuff that most parents wouldn't normally let their children watch slash play at the that ages at the ages I would. Um, it seems like everyone thinks children could get, like, scarred for life after doing stuff like that, even though everyone I know who watched and you know, played more mature content are pretty normal now. What are your thoughts on allowing kids to watch and play content meant for older audiences? Sorry for the rambling. That's all right, buddy. First of all, how the fuck did you trick your mom into buying it for you? Like, arguably, she can read it better than you because she's an adult and you're five or six. Like, she must have seen it unless she was just like, Oh, Halo! I, they talk about these in church. I don't know why your mom sounds like my old woman voice, but uh, but she does. Yeah, I don't know. I I know it's like the cool thing to say. Like, yeah, just fucking play whatever. Let four-year-olds play GTA V. When in reality, it's like, no, there really should be a cutoff for some reason. Like, I don't know the neurological reason or any of that shit or any fucking reason why, but I do think that a uh, like, six-year-old playing a hyper-violent game like Grand Theft Auto. That's not good for them. That can't be healthy for development. Like, I don't know any science behind it, any neurological studies, anything like that. That's just my gut feeling of, you know, hold off until you're a bit older, and then you can play it. Like, wait until maybe early teens or whatever. Like, don't... Maybe even, like, 12. Like, just until you understand the, the finality of what... Maybe not the maybe that's the wrong word. Until you understand what it is you're doing in the game and how that's not acceptable in real life, like that's pretty easy to pick up actually. So I don't know. I don't know what the cutoff is, but it, with something like Halo, I don't think it matters. Like it's Halo. It's already understood that you're like a robot jumping around, shooting shit, doing whatever. Like it's not super gory or bloody. I don't think that matters. But uh, for really potentially sadistic games where you can do fucked up stuff like GTA. I, that's just the first game that's coming to mind. Then I'd say that's not good for young kids. Hey Taylor, anonymity is appreciated. Okay, so here's the deal. I recently turned 18 and downloaded Tinder just to mess around. I didn't keep the app long, but I saw one girl that goes to my school. The thing is, I first met her somewhere between kindergarten or second grade, and back then, not that it matters, we were good friends, but the last time we talked was, in, was like sixth grade. Uh, we're both seniors now. When I saw her on Tinder, my first instinct was immediately to try and match with her. Good instinct. But I decided against it. Oh. And this caused me to delete my account and uninstall. What the fuck? You see a girl that you want to bang on Tinder and you uninstall it and delete your account? I don't... This is a weird progression, sir. Weird. I don't know why that... What? It's like if you're going to Chipotle... And you're like, do you have steak burritos here? And they're like, yes, yes, we do. And you're like, oh, okay, see you later. Like, they, yeah, they, they, they'd had what you wanted. You wanted a big steak burrito full of puss, and you, you lost it. You left. Anyway, since then, I've been thinking about her, wondering if I should try and get with her. Yep, you signed back up, buddy. She, at one point, did message me to make sure I'd vote for her for some homecoming court, but that is all we've said to each other. I don't share any classes or friends with her, so it seems Tinder may be my only shot. I've even considered using the super like on Tinder just to try and match, make a match more likely. In case you don't know what a super like is, it basically puts me at the top of her feed and shows her that I liked her and from what I understand, makes a match far more likely. Thank you for explaining that, because I had no idea. I've never used Tinder. Um, but think I may come off desperate or something. 
So Taylor, what do you think? Should I try to get her in some way, whether it be on Tinder or even somehow in person, or should I just wait until the school year is over and try Tinder just to avoid embarrassment? Uh, thanks for reading, and sorry it was such a long ramble. I'm glad you started podcasting again. Keep up the great work. Well, thank you very much, Anonymous. Um, yeah, I see Tinder wasn't around when when I was in high school, so I have no fucking idea. Honestly, don't do it on Tinder. That does seem a little weird if you're in class with her and shit. Try and talk to her first. See if she's interested. Maybe even make a... Like, you have nothing to fucking lose. You don't think it's going to happen. And so you have... you. If you do nothing, nothing happens. If you do something and it happens, that's a, that's a cherry on the Sunday. If you do something and nothing happens, who gives a fuck? It doesn't matter. You're a senior. Uh, just go up to her. Maybe even mention you saw her on Tinder or something. I don't know if that's really creepy or not because I don't use Tinder and I didn't have it in high school. Um, if not, if you're not feeling ballsy enough for that, then absolutely go back and like her on Tinder. Uh, but do not do that super like thing because that will come off as a bit desperate if it's anything like the way you described it. So best of luck. Um, give her hell. But use protection. Uh, actually, don't even use protection. That's a joke. Don't use protection. That ruins it. Uh, hey, Taylor. I'm a 17-year-old in high school from Australia, and over the last couple of weeks, I've been on a streak of fucking up. Well, then you're due for a streak of success. About a month and a half ago, I began to take Ritalin and Speed to help me study for my exams. All was well until I realized I became hooked and couldn't study without them. Oh, well, I thought, I'll just stop taking them after the exams. After exams, I went to a party and got drunk. I must have consumed a few points of coke throughout the night, and in my blind euphoric hyperactive state i hooked up with a girl who was below average looks wise and the sadder part was a mate of mine got with her literally four minutes before to top it all off everyone now knows i'm a speed slash coke head jesus christ this this started off and then went straight down the rabbit hole jesus um you started off with a little ritalin addiction which doesn't seem like a big deal at all um, I don't really have hardly any experience with those drugs because I would take them once in a blue moon to help me study, and that was fucking it. I never enjoyed it. I hated it. Hated it. Um, where the fuck was I? Uh, also, since I was busy with study, I stopped working, and over the past month, I drained my bank account completely, drugs, and pointless purchases. Do you have any suggestions on how I recovered from a month of chaos and get my shit together? Um, well, first of all, go back to work. With you, when you're at work, you don't have enough time to be getting fucked up all the time, and you also are going to have money. So it's going to reverse that whole money problem. I'm assuming, because you said it like that, that going back to work for you doesn't mean getting a whole new job. It just means, like, hey, I'll take some more hours this week or whatever the hell. Um, as for the cocaine, I would strongly suggest that you quit that, you know. That is neither something you want to get addicted to or even just use regularly, nor something that you want people around you to know that you do if you do it, because it's, it just reflects very poorly on you. This isn't the 80s, dude. You can't do that. Um, yeah, well, more important than anything, kudos to you for being a cool kid party animal. Not really. Um, yeah, just be careful with all that shit, man. That's that's risky business, what you're, what you're playing with there, especially drinking a ton, doing coke i don't know what four points of coke is if that's something that you guys talk about over there in australia or if i'm just that uneducated on cocaine use that i don't know what a point is i assume it's just a bump that you put on your knuckle or on a key or on you know a creepy guy's long pinky fingernail but who knows uh yeah just go back to work work as much as you can while you can maintain your studies and just take a little while off you know still go out drink have fun with your friends but jesus christ no more cocaine for you good sir Hey Taylor, I was watching your newest zombie videos and it was wonderful! Thank you. While I was watching you use the sniper, I thought about the old Call of Duty sniper montages. I think it would be funny video idea if you made a serious montage but used only half-decent sniper or piss-poor clips of you getting, like, a double kill in zombies. Maybe this is a good idea or maybe you think it sucks. It's your channel and you make the videos just trying to give input. Thank you for making videos and being a huge source of entertainment. Well, you're welcome, Paul. Um... Maybe I'll do that. I've, I've honestly thought about that a lot of times before, and I've started it like three years ago, maybe even four years ago now. I started it, and Jesus Christ, like I'm, I'm so bad at editing that like the humor was lost in my ineptitude, if that makes sense. Uh, so yeah, that's a good idea. Definitely not a shit idea, buddy, 
But um, I'm calling you guys buddy a lot this episode. But you're not my buddy guy. Um, yeah. So maybe I'll do that in the future. For now, I just need to work on actually getting way higher rounds to post on these maps. I've only gotten to the 30s on uh, the new zombie map. So need I'd like to get to like 40 or maybe even 50. You know, it's, it's not even a matter of difficulty. It's just a matter of a little bit of luck, a pinch of magic, and two days' time. All right. From Dustin. My roommate is a dick. Merka, I am a freshman at the University of Cincinnati. Um, sorry, I was skipping ahead to the end to make sure that... Because so many of you guys, like, you'll write a question, and then it'll be like, Hey, my name's Chris, and, uh... I did all this, and I, you know, my mom gave me a hand job, and it was really fucked up. And, and, by the way, this is the end of the message. Don't say my name. And it's like, well, God damn it, you should have said that at the beginning, buddy. Buddy, um, my roommate is a dick. Merka, I am a freshman at the University of Cincinnati. I absolutely hate, I absolutely love college, and I've been doing well with school, maintaining a social life, and I get along with my other two roommates, but I absolutely hate the third. He was cool at first the time when I could switch rooms, then instantly became a dick. He started smoking pot in the room. That's a real douche move if the other person is not cool with it. Uh, he has gotten the cops called to our room twice after I had asked him repeatedly to stop smoking. Um, yeah, fuck this guy. He and his girlfriend have been having sex every night while I am trying to sleep. Oh, what could you do there? What could you do there? We, uh, is the bathroom adjacent? Like, it, c from where they're fucking, can they see into the bathroom and the toilet? Because if they are, I would really strongly encourage you to go take an open door dump and just kind of look at them. Look at them and kind of, like, act like you're getting into it a little bit. They'll get creeped out and then they'll have to stop. And then when he says close the door, be like, no, you do this somewhere else. I like open door poops. You know, I can't close the door in here because it smells so much like pot. I need a little bit of wafting. Honestly, I'd rather get my shit smell out there to take out some of that skunky mess than, than just be sitting in here with this, this pot fumes going in my nose. What if I have a drug test? What if I come up high? Um, yeah, take an open door shit and look at them. That's what my advice is. I haven't even finished reading this. Um, uh, da, 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 da. He and his girlfriend have been having sex every night when I'm trying to sleep. She never leaves our room, even though she lives across the hall. She even invites her friends to our room to watch Netflix, even if he is not there. That's weird. One day, he was a dick to her, and she started crying, and he left to get high. I was trying to sleep and told her to shut up or leave the room. The attention she was seeking would not be found in here. She started crying harder and called me a dick and didn't leave. That's great. That's great. Um, but you should have done even more than saying, like, your attention won't be found here. Even that was a source of attention, that you were acknowledging her that she was sad. So she probably even got a little a little bit of an emotional high from that. So... Next time, just just like a child that's being insolent, just let her cry herself out, you know, like you let babies do. Just let her cry herself to sleep. Or, uh, actually, that's good advice from me sitting here, but it's going to be difficult advice to follow when there's somebody crying next to you and you're just like, oh my fucking god, stop crying! Yeah, I hate it when people cry. Um, one day it was dick to her, what was the fuck was I talking about? She cried harder, said you were a dick. He is generally... You were not being a dick. They were being dicks. You said you knew you were being a dick. You were not at all. Not at all. Uh, he is generally rude and has never worked for a thing in his life. He is also an idiot. He has managed to lose his room key and the spare. They are both $80 to replace, but he is broke even though he has money for weed every week. Uh, this means he always leaves our door unlocked for anyone to come in. I have tried to ignore him. I have asked nicely. We even got into a fight where I absolutely kicked his ass. Nice, but nothing works and I am out of ideas. I have tried to get ideas from my friends, but they think it is hilarious and offer shit advice. I love the show and wish you the best. Thanks for reading. Um, well then, <laughs> you're used to getting shit advice. That's what you just got. Um, honestly, dude, if you can't, the only recourse you have is to go to I guess they're called RAs, the resident advisor, which is usually a student that's a little older on your floor, and you can go to them with complaints anonymously, or go to the manager of the dormitory and complain about that. Because if everything you said is true, that's fucking inexcusable. That's not acceptable to live like that and make someone else live like that. Uh, if you want like funny advice, shit with the door open. Um, if you want maybe slightly illegal advice that could get you in trouble if he has any big drug dealer friends, which I'm doubting, then uh, when he leaves the door unlocked, 
skip class when he knows you're out and you know he's out. Go back, steal the weed, throw it away, and then when he looks for it later, be be like, uh, you left the fucking door unlocked, dude. Everybody knows you smoke. Like, you could do that. Uh, smartest thing to do, just go to the dorm person, the, the manager there, or the student dean, uh, the dean of student relations, and get it worked out that way. Because otherwise, it's, this is just going to continue. Uh, the... Could you please specify why fat? Could you please specify why fat girls wear tights? Um, yeah, because they think it looks good when in fact they look like uh, one of those big containers of cookie dough that's in that tight wrapping that you get like Pillsbury chocolate chip cookie dough, and when you slit the side with a knife, it kind of just comes like boom, like spilling out. Um, that's what they look like. Not nearly as delicious though. Um, I think the equivalent of that is why guys who are not jacked or in excellent shape will wear those really thin workout tank tops. Not just a regular tank top that you use for doing yard work, like those spaghetti strap looking tank tops with a deep V neck. Like guys who wear those but aren't in exceptionally good shape. Like that's the equivalent, I think. Um, anyway, from Chip. I have a theoretical question. It is very important that you think the answer through very carefully as this question has been the cause of many, many heated debates between my friends. Um, who would win in a fight? A half-sized mountain lion, about 130 pounds. How big do you think mountain lions are? Those things are not 260 pounds unless I am... Let me see. A half-sized mountain lion. Do you mean mountain lion? 140. Oh, well, fuck me. Yeah, you're right. So, mountain lion's about 140 pounds. So, a half size one of those is 70 pounds uh, with no teeth or claws, versus a fit, athletic 17 year old boy who's a state champion wrestler but has no real fighting experience. Um, the fight would take place in something similar to a gladiator arena with no weapons for the human. A response would be highly appreciated. It's kind of depressing how important an answer to this question is for us. Um, this comes down to if it is a 130-pound cat. Because when you say half-size mountain lion, if you mean half of 130 pounds, then I'm saying the fit 17-year-old boy would win because that no teeth, no claws, it's just going to have to bat at you and try and, like, knock you over repeatedly until eventually you... Well, if, is it a fight to the death? Or is it just a fight, like, to see who... Well, I guess it has to be to the death. So, if that were the case, I'd say the wrestler would win. No teeth or claws, that gives it a, him a huge advantage. If it's the 130-pound one, that thing is going to win. Because people strongly underestimate the strength of an animal that size. Even though the state champion wrestler is probably like 140, maybe like 10, 15 pounds heavier that thing is going to fuck him up. Its arms are stronger than his. Its leaping ability. It's going to be able to throw itself at him. It's going to be able to... It's its going to beat him, definitely. It would take a while for him to gum him to death with no teeth, but it would absolutely beat the 17-year-old. Yeah, the, the full size... or not The 130-pound mountain lion is going to be the, the victor. It's a good question, though. Very good question. Uh, da, 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 da. Um... That's not even a question. What the fuck? There it is. Here's one truly terrible podcast question from Derry. So anyway, I've been watching a long time since your channel was in the pre-50K subs era, and I always loved you and your commentaries full homo. Thank you. Anyway, my question to you is why can't you talk about your job? Is it because people might find your address? Maybe you don't want your boss finding out for obvious reasons? Or can you even give us a reason? Um, honestly, this has come up so many times that it's like I always get the same same answer. I just it's just not something that I can I can talk about. You know, I have given the field that I work in before. It's just I can't give specifics. Um that's that's really it. Like no other fears or anything, just it's not a part of my life I want projected on the internet, you know? Um from Matt. Dear Taylor, I am a fifteen year old freshman and I am five ten, two fifty seven. Almost three weeks ago I started dieting, basically just cutting out liquid calories in any food beside my three square meals. That is gonna do wonders for you, man. Liquid calories are a bitch. Beer, soda, milk, 
Juice? Juice is the sneakiest ninja calorie drink. Oh, I'll just start my day with a big old glass of orange juice, and I'm already 400 calories in the hole. Fuck that. You're doing the right thing. Um, I've lost 7 pounds and hopefully a full 10 by the end of the month. My only problem is that while I work at weight loss, dieting, as well as light physical exercise, my friends, some I've known for as long as four years, continue to make jabs at me. I know they're only joking, but when I'm trying to lose weight and I go to school the next day and my friend jokingly calls me a fat lard, it makes me feel like all my efforts aren't enough. My question is how can I politely ask my friends to lay off the fat jokes without sounding like a pussy? I understand if you don't get around to answering this next week, um, but because you've already answered a similar question the previous week. Uh, okay. Do not go to your friends and ask them to lay off. Absolutely do not do that. You are a teenage guy. It's your freshman year. They're going to be vicious. They're gonna, it's going to incentivize them. Everybody your age in that time, they're making fun of you because they're really insecure in how they are, and you have a very easy target of being fat. That's not, like, that's just, it's more apparent, you know? It's the most apparent. First thing you notice, it's like, okay, that guy's tall, that guy's black, and that person is overweight. Like, it's just, you can't help but notice some things. And so they're glowing onto that because it's the easiest thing they can do to try and, you know, step on your, your shoulders to push themselves up the social hierarchy. So do not, under any circumstance, ask them to lay off. Use it as fuel. Use it as fuel. It's only been three weeks. Um, honestly, I'd say at your weight right now, your height, you can lose more than you know, I guess three weeks, seven pounds, like 1.8 pounds a week. I'd say you should push yourself for, for a full two plus pounds a week. You can do that, definitely. And uh, those insults are going to stop right quick as soon as you hit the weight that they're at. And then what you should be doing is as you're losing the weight, once you get to where you're comfortable in a gym setting, start lifting weights as you're losing the weight, you know, so you're going to have to do some research on uh, the amount of protein you need, all that kind of shit to make it so you're going to be burning the fat or I guess using the fat as a fuel for you to gain muscle mass. But then once you're down to like uh, your 5'10", so once you're down to like 1, you know, 80, or, or I guess once you're down to like 190 and you're still looking maybe a little t a tiny bit chubby, but not uh, 5'10", 190, I guess... I'm just thinking, like, when I was 190 and I'm six foot, like, I I can pull that off, but I start to notice in my face that I'm ballooning, ballooning up a little bit. So you're five, a little shorter than me. Um, yeah, so you want to get probably to, like, 180, 170. I don't even know. I don't know. According to the BMI charts, my healthy weight at, like, six foot and a half inch is uh, 175 to like 180, which is always, it's always lower than you think because we're so used to being fat in this country, but just use it as fuel. Do not ask him to stop. That will just lead to more shit. Um, from, fuck, I need to check and make sure this douchey isn't gonna say all this shit and then be like, don't use my name. All right. From Zach. Truly terrible question, am I the asshole? I love these. Send more of these in, guys. I like am I the assholes. Hey, Taylor, thought this might be a good question for the show. I love the show, and I always listen to it when I go to the gym. Anyway, here's some backstory. I am 21, and my sister is 23. Ever since high school, my sister was a party animal. She would always go out drinking and go to blowouts, while I tend to stay in or hang out with my closest guy friends and drink and stay social. Nothing wrong with that. I always tended to be more introverted and would tend to be sober more often than her. So my sister would always call me to pick her up, to pick her and her drunk friends up every night that I tended, and I tended to be forced into by my parents who didn't want to pick her up. I usually didn't mind when I was younger, but as I have grown up, I tend to drink more and go to bars, but my sister still always asks for rides. Yeah, that's shitty, dude. Like, it's understandable when you're, when she's 21 and you're 19, because it's like, what the fuck are you doing anyway? You know, you can't go out. But now that she's 23 and you're 21, it's like it's almost like, hey, back off. Like, I, you had your time. I don't even have a younger sibling to chauffeur me around, so, like, I I don't appreciate this. Um, anyway, where the fuck am I? She tends to treat it like I have to do it as a younger brother should. No. Fuck. That's I picked up at the wrong spot. I, I'm going to spoil it. Um, I usually don't mind when I was younger, but, but as I have grown up, I tend to drink more and go to bars, but my sister still always asks for rides. The problem here is that she always is always nasty about it and never says thank you or gives me gas money. Fuck her. 
She tends to treat it like I have to do it as a younger brother should. Anyway, flash forward to last weekend. I told my sister that under any circumstances, I would not be able to drive her this night because I had plans with friends. However, my plans fell through and I was sober and coherent when my sister called me up at 2 in the morning. I was playing Destiny with my friends, so I was pretty free to pick her up. Well, when she called me up and started cursing me to pick her up, I pretended to be drunk and at a party, saying I couldn't drive. Nice. 10 out of 10. This forced her and her boyfriend to walk home in the cold, drunk. So my point is, I should pick her. Should I pick her up no matter the situation, or stand by, or stand up to her and say to fuck off if she is not going to respect my favors? P.S. I love hockey talk, and I'm a huge New York Rangers fan. The Blues are great this year, but I am writing this um, as the Rangers just beat them. Ha ha. <laughs> yeah, Rangers are really good as well. Very solid game. Um, we'll get you next time, though, guaranteed. As soon as we get all our injuries taken care of. Anyway, to your question, though. Um, yeah, fuck, fuck her, dude. That's fucking ridiculous. You, you're 21, you can go drink, do your own thing. If she's not even thankful or appreciative of this shit at all, you have no incentive to keep doing it. Why? Why should you be a nice guy when she isn't even going to give you the common courtesy to say thank you or to offer to pay for gas? She obviously has money to go out drinking, so she should have some fucking money to call a cab. So, yeah, fuck her. That's ludicrous. Not fair at all to you. Um... Yeah, that's that's total horseshit nonsense, dude. Anyway, I'll do one more. Uh, podcast question. Please keep this anonymous. Am I the asshole? Yes, I love these. Am I the asshole for wanting to break up with my long-distance girlfriend? So me and my girlfriend started dating in high school about four months before graduating. Everything was going great until the end of the summer when she moved four hours away for school. We mutually decided that we should go for it because she initially said that she, she would return to our current city to go to a university here after this year of university ends. Long-distance relationships don't work that well. That's rough. Especially when there's an in conclusive end date of when it will stop being long distance. That is rough, man. Um, so you started dating in high school about four... Oh, man. Only four months before graduating? See, I made that same mistake, but I had been dating my high school girlfriend from, like, I guess the middle or the end of my junior year. So a little over a year when we went to college, and we tried to do the long distance thing, didn't end up working out, and it was just a big shit show, and I hated it. Uh, not like we broke up and hated each other or anything. We just realized after a while of being apart where it was like hey we are really going different directions in life right now and we are not even going to be the same people when we get back to home for a break so yeah no no thank you let's let's call this quits um anyway everything was going great until the end of the summer when she moved four hours away for school however just by what she tells me she is very enveloped in the school in regards to clubs activities professional connections and a lot of friends and because of this she never talks to me unless i initiate conversation over text Ugh. dude i hate to say it but it's already over it's already over man that was what i hated about the long-term relationship is that my sorry to keep bringing this back to me but it's the only way i have to understand it is that my girlfriend at the time would when we first went to college and we tried to keep it going, she would call every fucking night and want to talk for like two hours. And I would just be like, oh my fucking God, I don't care. I just wanted to scream. I don't fucking care what you have to say. Like, why? Are, oh my God. And it took me so long to end up pulling the trigger on the breakup because it was like, what's the fucking point? Like, I, oh, it was awful. Um, yeah, so definitely this is this is over. If she's not initiating conversation, you're the one constantly initiating it. She's already getting over it. Um, I don't know if this is a common thing among girls to just never talk about it to the guy first, but it's pretty ridiculous that I always have to start conversations if we are going to, act to actually talk. Anyways, I don't want to have to wait four years for her to finish school just to see if this miraculously works out. Obviously, it's highly unlikely. I know this is a very stupid getting into a relationship at that stage in my life. Hey, you're at that stage in your life. Most people are stupid then. But knowing me, I wouldn't have been able to live with myself knowing I never at least gave it a shot. It's understandable. So am I that asshole for thinking it would benefit us both to end this emotionally draining relationship that I am not enjoying? No. You are not an asshole. You are the brave good guy. I say if if you are if you have still not broken up and you are listening to this podcast right now, call her and end it. Fucking end that shit. All that's going to happen is you're going to continue to be emotionally drained by what it sounds like is you're putting a lot of thought and effort into trying to salvage this, but she is not reciprocating because she is already moving on. 
She is already moving on. She's either moving on to more friends or more than likely because it's college and it's the first taste of freedom. She may have found like, oh, she saw, you know, a cute guy there that she's like, oh, well, you know, I really like so-and-so, but uh, maybe I should just be free and slut it up for a couple of years. Like, honestly, you do not want this. She clearly doesn't want it. Break this shit up as soon as you hear this podcast. And if you do, fucking message me back so I can know how it went. Anyway, that's the end of the podcast. Check out Vapo Labs. Um, hopefully you guys enjoyed. And yeah, that should just about do it. And really do support the sponsor. Helps me out a lot, and it would really mean a lot if you would do that for me. Um, but don't be one of those vapor guys who blows clouds at restaurants. Don't be a cock. You know, nobody likes that. Anyway, that's it. And I uh, love you.